Proudly, we hail. City, where the American stage begins, here is another program with a cast of outstanding players. Public service time has been made available by this station to bring you this story, as proudly we hail the United States Army. Titled The Newcomers. This is the tense and dramatic story of a man who learned the true meaning of comradeship the hard way, as proudly we hail the United States Army's artillery. Our first act curtain will rise in just a moment, but first. Young man, be honest with yourself. Have you reached a standstill in life? Is each day just like any other? Are you worried about your future? And most important of all, are you feeling dissatisfied with yourself and your personal development? Well, if this description or any part of it fits you, it's just about time you investigated the opportunities waiting for you when you enlist in the United States Army. Every man in the Army has a skill, and more often than not, the Army taught him that skill in one of its fine schools. The Army offers an interesting present and a secure future, with plenty of promotions along the way. And above all, the Army molds you into a man, a man whose family, friends, and country are proud of him. If you think you can measure up, stop in at your nearest recruiting office and see if you can qualify to wear the mark of a man, the uniform of your United States Army. And now your United States Army presents the proudly we hail production, The Newcomers. <laughs> You know, I've got a soft spot in my heart for dogs. But it wasn't always like that. There was a time when I could take them or leave them. But I changed my mind about them, yes, sir. However, that wasn't until I got in the Army some years back and was transferred to England in the spring of 44, right before the invasion. I was a sergeant then and chief of section in a 105 millimeter howitzer battery of a field artillery regiment. As you know, around that time, England was bulging with our troops, and everywhere you'd turn, you'd see howitzer batteries. But of all these outfits, I was convinced that my section was best. Yeah, I know that's what a soldier's supposed to think, but if you'd seen the way they put a piece into action on the firing range, you'd have to agree with me. Ready, number one, fire! Fire! From the opening command, it took only a few seconds until they had destroyed their target. A gun squad of eight cannoneers working at 100% efficiency is like seeing Joe DiMaggio take a cut at a ball. Or if you want to get a little corny about it, you could call it poetry in motion. At least that's what Corporal Harris used to say. Yes, yeah, Sergeant Mason, it's like a work of art. A play, a ballet, a symphony. It takes teamwork to bring off any great feat. Corporal Harris was my right-hand man. He was a real artilleryman. There wasn't anything he didn't know about operating a 105. And between the two of us, we were able to keep the section not only proud, but happy and contented as well. And then one day, something happened that sort of changed things. I just got back to my tent with some interesting news. Corporal Harris? Yes, yeah, Sergeant. Just been down the orderly room to a meeting. Effective at once, everybody's restricted to their battery areas. Why? How come? Take a guess. You mean it's coming off, finally? Yeah, finally. Nobody knows exactly when, but it looks like we're soon going to be making a boat trip. Well, maybe it's another maneuver. I don't think so. It's a little different this time. Looks like they're in earnest, real earnest. Well, that's great. But wait a minute, Sarge. I just thought of something. Jackson isn't back from the hospital yet. Yeah, and he won't be. They're shipping him back to the States. Well, that means we'll be one man short when we go into action. Don't worry about it. The first sergeant told me just now we'll be getting a replacement. Should be in tomorrow. Well, I hope he knows something about a 105. I know this much. He had 13 weeks at Fort Bragg. Wow. In that case, we shouldn't have too much trouble with him. I'll put him in number seven man spot. As it happened, Harris's prediction didn't turn out quite the way he thought it would. 
The next day, right after we'd had dinner, I stopped by the section tent to give them the rundown on what was on our schedule that afternoon. Oh, I say, there. What say you and me having a bit of a set to with the blasted dart, eh? Listen, I don't care if I never look another dart in the face again. <laughs> Where we're going, we'll be throwing bigger things than darts, and I can hardly wait. Yeah, you ain't kidding. After waiting this long, I'm ready for anything. All right, men. Give me your attention for a minute. As you know, this looks like it's it. But that doesn't mean that all we have to do now is sit back and wait. Well, we got everything all set, ain't we, Sarge? Sure, O'Connell, but it might be today or two months from now, so we're gonna proceed just as usual, and that means gun drill this afternoon. Oh, well, that's okay with us, Sarge. We don't want to let ourselves get stale. How about it, fellas? That goes right, for me. Yeah. Oh, that's what I wanted to hear. Oh, can I help you? You Sergeant Mason? That's right. My name's Gallagher. First sergeant told me to report to you. Oh, sure. Glad to meet you, Gallagher. Might as well put your barracks bag down and rest. This is where you're going to end up. I can hold it. I'm not that weak. Man, meet your new number seven man. He's taking Jackson's place. Aye, aye, Gallagher. I only got a couple of things to say, Gallagher, and then you can get yourself settled. First, you're a lucky soldier. Yeah? How? Because you're assigned to the fastest and most efficient gun squad in the whole artillery regiment, that's why. Second, it looks like we're going into action soon. And you're going to have to work special hard to measure up to the rest of the section. Who says I don't already? Well, if you do, you'll have to prove it. Is that all you have to say? Yeah, that's all for now. Okay, Harris. Over here, Gallagher. Well, Corporal Harris showed him to his cot. I stood there for a moment watching him. He was a bulky guy with big, gnarled hands, leathery face, and sandy hair. He was hard as nails. I came to the conclusion that I'd better keep an eye on him. I turned to leave the tent. As I stepped outside, I could have sworn that someone came in the same time as I came out, but when I turned around, I didn't see anything. I thought I must have been imagining things, but I was mistaken. That was when our section received its second newcomer, only I didn't know it, not then. That afternoon, I had a few things to check over with the supply sergeant, and I didn't get around to the drill field until around 4 o'clock. When I got there, I found Corporal Harris running the squad through gun drill. Boys! Harris! Hi, Sergeant Mason. Oh, how's it going, Harris? All right, I guess. Any news yet? Not yet. The situation is still as is. How's the new man doing? Well, from what I can see, for only 13 weeks training, he sure knows his 105. I rotated the squad through the various positions, and he was right at home in each of them. You think he'll fit in without too much trouble, then? As a cannoneer member of a gun squad, sure. But as a soldier, I got my doubts. So do I. Well, you must have noticed it, too, huh? Yeah, I did. Something eating him. That's right. Uh, look, I may be wrong, but I think it isn't just a temporary thing. It's something he's lived with for a long time. Well, I'll try to work on him. Yeah. Maybe you can shake him out of it like you did with O'Connell's homesick. <laughs> hey, what the heck is that? Huh? Oh, him. I, I mean it. Well, it sure isn't it, all right. What kind of an animal is it? The dog, Sarge. Come here, boy. Come on. Yeah, I guess you're right. It is a dog, but it's about the saddest-looking cur I ever did see, and I've seen plenty. Where'd he come from? Came in with Gallagher. He claims it followed him from the railroad station. Hey, Sergeant Mason, how do you like our new mascot? Mascot? Where do you get that idea, O'Connell? Well, the guys have already adopted him, Sarge. Yeah, they think it's a good luck sign coming in like this just before we're about to take off. Well, that might be so, but if I was you guys, I wouldn't plan too much on that. Well, how come, Sarge? In the first place, the way he... it looks now, I don't think it'll live very long. And in the second place, he won't be able to get a first-class ticket as a passenger on an LST. Hey, I never thought of that. Maybe you ought to talk it over with the fellows, O'Connell, huh? Yeah, yeah, I guess I will. Come on, boy. Come on. You'll have to see that they get rid of that animal, yeah. Harris. The sooner, the better. That evening, we non-coms had a meeting with the CO, dealing with preparations for our expected move-out. Following that, I burned the midnight oil, refreshing myself with some field manuals, and when I hit the sack around 11.30, I was pretty well beat. It didn't take long until I was in dreamland. But as it turned out, it didn't take long until I was out of it. Hey, Sarge. Sarge, wake uh, up. Uh, wait, wait, what's up, Harris? Something the matter? Look, I'm sorry to disturb you like this, but uh, it's Gallagher. He wants to talk to you. In the middle of the night, what's he want? He, uh... Look, I tried to stop him, but he insisted on coming himself. He can explain it to you. Okay, send him in. Right. Come on in, Gallagher. What's on your mind, Gallagher? Couldn't you wait till the morning? I'll tell you what's on my mind. 
What kind of an outfit have I got myself in with, I'd like to know. What's the matter with this outfit? From what little I've seen, plenty, but that ain't my concern. As long as they tend to their own business and let mine alone, that's all I ask. Come on out with it. What's eating you? Let me ask you something, Sergeant Mason. Is there anything in Army regulations that says I gotta sleep with animals? What are you talking about? You better tell that squad of yours. They brung that dog into the tent tonight and aiming to sleep in the same tent with a mangy animal around me. They did. Corporal Harris, I thought I told you they'd have to get rid of that dog. Well, yes, yeah, Sergeant, but how? The, the, the men are restricted, and if the pooch hangs around, what are they going to do? A Gallagher here is right. A dog doesn't have to stay in the tent. Well, I know it isn't regulation, but it gets kind of chilly out at night, and the poor mutt's half-starved as it is. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what to do. I got an empty ration box here for my firewood. This set of all fatigues. They're worn out anyway. Take them and make a bed for it right outside the tent flat. That ought to keep them warm. Thanks, Sarge. You better get rid of it tomorrow. Hold it a minute, Gallagher. You satisfied now? Yeah. Okay, now you listen to me. You proved today that you know what it takes to operate a 105. But you still haven't proved that you know how to soldier. I got a good squad. But what makes it good is not only their skill around a gun, but the way they feel, too. And the way you started, you ain't gonna be much help in that. Yeah, I know you got your rights. But you're gonna have to learn that you have to give a little, too. For your own good, as well as the squads. You are listening to the proudly we hail production, The Newcomers. We'll return in just a moment for the second act. High school seniors, here's an important message for you. The United States Army's Reserve for You program will guarantee you a classroom seat in an exciting Army technical career course before you enlist. You'll get top-notch training, on-the-job experience, while serving side-by-side -side with America's finest young men. The choice is wide open, and it's yours to make. High school graduates can choose from more than 100 interesting career courses that range from atomic technician through welding. A fact-filled booklet called Reserve for You tells you about the entire program. Get in on the swing. Get your free copy of Reserve for You by visiting or writing your nearest United States Army recruiting station. You are listening to Proudly We Hail, and now we present the second act of The Newcomers. <laughs> The following morning, after my midnight interview with Private Gallagher, I decided I'd better have a talk with the squad. From the way Corporal Harris had talked, I figured the men were beginning to take the stray dog to their hearts, and I wanted to set them straight in how I felt about it. So before the battery fell out for first call, I dropped by to their tent. Oh, good morning, Sarge. Morning, Harris. Any more trouble last night? No, no, we fixed up the bed for Scotty. Scotty? You mean to tell me he's a Scotch Terrier? <laughs> Who are you kidding? No. And it isn't a he, it's a she. They named her Scotty from the word mascot. You got it? Yeah. She seemed pretty comfortable in the box you gave her. Ah, uh, where's it now? Inside the tent with the men. They've been feeding her scraps from breakfast. She sure goes for flapjacks. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like the men are enjoying it as much as the sure dogs. Are. Well, you better call them out. I want to talk to them. Okay, sir. All right, men. Outside. Come on, let's go. On the double. All right, on the double. Just, just fall in in front of the tent, huh? Oh, man. Just want to tell you something about your new mascot. Hey, Sarge, you ain't going to tell us to give her up. I'm afraid so, O'Connell. Oh. Now, I know you don't like it. The only reason I'm saying it is that I know when we ship out, she's going to have to stay behind. I think it's best that she go now before you become too attached to her. <laughs> D-Day came and went, and we still sweated out our orders. I noticed that the men made no effort to get rid of their mascot, Scotty, but I didn't mention it to them again. The squad wasn't feeling too good about not being in on the invasion. So I decided to forget about it and let them work it out for themselves when the time came for them to give her up. That time came all right, but not before I had another visit from Gallagher. Sergeant Mason? Yeah, Gallagher, what is it? I want to put in for a transfer. Transfer? How oh, come? I just don't fit in with your squad. Yeah, I noticed that. You know why? No, I don't care to know. Why, you sure got a chip on your shoulder. Anybody ever knock it off? Yeah, but it didn't stay off long. Now, how about it? 
Gallagher, how come you enlisted? Didn't you know you'd have to learn to get along with other people in the army? I got my reasons why I enlisted. I told you once I can get along if I'm left alone. Well, is anybody bothering no, you? No, but they ask too many questions. What I'd done before I got in the army is my business, ain't it? Sure. Maybe it's because they want to become your friends. You got to know something about a guy before you can do that. I don't need any friends. Maybe you'll change your mind about that someday. Okay, I'll talk to the first sergeant about transferring you. Okay. But remember this, Gallagher. You'll never solve anything by running away from it. What do you... What do you mean, I ain't running away? Hey, Sarge, see you once you're right away in the orderly room. Right, Corporal Harris. Think over what I said, Gallagher. When I got down to the orderly room, I forgot all about Gallagher's request for a transfer. For orders had just come down calling for our immediate shipment to France. Well, naturally, you can imagine the things that had to be done in order to move an artillery battery to a port of embarkation. But our plans had been prepared well in advance, and things proceeded like clockwork. When we landed two days later on the coast of Normandy, I marched to the section of their bivouac area and lined them up to assign them their individual positions for their pup tents. By that time, it was getting dark, and I didn't notice it, but when I got down to the end of the line... Adams, McGregor, over under that tree. Yes, sir. O'Connell and Gallagher, beside that big rock there. Right, Sarge. Well, that does it. Oh, for you and me, Corporal Harris. Yeah, Sarge, but didn't you forget somebody? I don't think so. This is the end of the squad roster. Take another look. Over there behind Gallagher. I not only took one look, I took two. But right behind Gallagher, trotting along, her nose lifted high and happily, was the familiar-looking brown and white bundle of Scotty. Well, I'll be... How the heck did she get here? I don't know, Sarge. I just noticed it myself for the first time. Somebody must have carried an extra barracks bag with him. That's funny. I checked every one myself, and I could have sworn it. Oh, well, there's no harm done, I guess. He or she is here now, and I suppose maybe it's just as well. I think it is, Sarge. Maybe the men are right. Maybe she'll bring some luck. Well, Scotty did bring some luck, but not the kind we expected. We laid over on the beach for about a week, and then we were assigned to an infantry division that seemed to be a reserve outfit. We would have supported, but somehow it never seemed to get in a position where it needed support. The front moved inland through Normandy, but we were always about 15 miles behind it. And like everything else, it's the waiting that's the hardest to go through. However, the men held up pretty well, and a lot of it was due to their mascot, Scotty. She was always the center of attraction for all the men in the section. All that is, except Gallagher. He just couldn't seem to stand the dog. I remember on the day that we got orders to move out again, about two weeks after we'd moved into Normandy. We had the gun hitched, and the men were all sitting in the truck waiting for the battery to move out. And I dropped around to see how they worked. Everybody's here, Sarge. Yeah, where are we going this time, Sarge? To support a quartermaster company? <laughs> Very funny. No, I think this is it this time. Well, I hope so. I'm beginning to forget what a 105 sounds like. <laughs> See, even Scotty agrees with me. Go on, get out of here. Hey, leave the dog alone, Gallagher. She's not bothering no one. Oh, yeah? <laughs> hey, look, Sarge, how about leaving her here? Every time I turn around, she's under my feet. Maybe that's because you gave her a chocolate bar that first day she came to the battery. I, I did nothing of the kind. What? Okay, okay. Have it your way. Look, if Scotty stays here, I am too. Yeah. That goes for me. Goes for me. All right, can it? She's coming along. We'll just have to put up with her, Gallagher. She's one of the squad now. Yeah, sure. When my transfer comes through, she can take my place. Your transfer? Maybe I can get in with an outfit with men in it instead of a bunch that acts like kids over a dirty mongrel. But I'm warning all you guys. Keep this mud away from me, or else I'll. You'll what? You'll find out. Until Gallagher mentioned it, I'd forgotten all about his request for a transfer. But after that episode, I promised myself to see to it first thing when we got to our new station. I'd hoped he'd come around, but I decided that he was nothing but a troublemaker, and the sooner he left, the better for the squad and for him, too. However, I didn't have a chance to get to it because when we reached our new area, I found that my hunch was right. The division we were supporting had pulled out of reserve and had replaced a division that had been on the front. You want the gun set up here in this field, Sergeant? Yeah. Now, here's the situation, men. To our immediate front there, you'll see a wooded ridge. The rifle battalion we're supporting is dug in at the base of the ridge on this side. They got outposts along the top. Now, the battalion that was here had been moving pretty fast, and nobody knows what's ahead out there beyond the ridge. 
At daybreak, the battalion we're supporting will start moving, so we have to be prepared to move out then, too. But right now, we'll dig in here. Well, if we're that close to them, maybe we better dig a recoil hole for the gun. Yeah, because we'll have to fire at a high elevation for such a short range. And when you're finished, make sure you also dig yourself some foxholes around the gun, just in case. You got your guard detail set up for tonight, Harris? Yes, Sarge. O'Connell from 10 to 12... Adams from 12 to 2, McGregor from 2 to 4, and Gallagher from 4 to 6. Fine, I'll see you later. I have to check with the CO. Right. Okay, man, let's get to it. When I reported to the CO, I found out that in all likelihood, there'd be nothing for us to do. But in any case, we'd be ready. So, I returned to the squad area, dug myself a foxhole, and bedded down for the night, leaving instructions with Gallagher to awaken me when he finished his tour of guard duty at 6 a.m. Well, I was awakened at six, all right. But not by Gallagher. Sarge. Sergeant Mason. Yeah? Oh. Oh, it was you, Harris. Thought I told Gallagher to wake me up. He's uh, not here, Sarge. What? Where is he? O'Connell just told me he saw him heading toward the ridge, and he's got Scotty with him. He has. What do you think, Corporal? I don't know. O'Connell said he yelled after him, but Gallagher just said something about losing the dog, and before O'Connell could stop him, he was gone up the hill. I've met all kinds of people in my life, but that guy takes the cake. Corporal, wake up the rest of the squad and see that they get their breakfast. I'm going to have to take off after him, or he's liable to not only lose that dog, but himself, too. Before I forget it again, tell the first sergeant that Gallagher wants to transfer, and as far as I'm concerned, the sooner the better. When I started up the path, daybreak was just beginning, so I was able to make time. In about 15 minutes, I was halted by an infantry outpost who told me he'd seen Gallagher. Yeah, about 15 minutes ago. You have a dog with him? Yeah, I tried to tell him it's kind of dangerous walking out there in no man's land like that, but he didn't pay me no mind. Yeah, he wouldn't. Thanks. Okay. Watch your steps, Sarge. About five minutes, I finally saw him about 500 yards ahead of me up the path. Beyond him, about a couple of hundred feet, was Scotty. <laughs> As I watched, I saw Scotty stop and then turn around and run back to Gallagher, barking her head off. When she reached Gallagher, she jumped up on him, barking all the while. Gallagher pushed her off and kept going, but Scotty kept running back and forth. It was as if she was trying to say something to him. I yelled at him, Gallagher, I'm back! He didn't pay any attention. He just kept on going. And finally, Scotty stopped barking and started running up the path ahead of him until... I took off as fast as I could, but Gallagher reached her before me. When I got there, he was holding Scotty in his arms, talking to her. But she couldn't hear him. Scotty. Hey, Scotty. No use, Gallagher. Sarge. She saved my life. Yeah. And she tried to tell me about, about the booby trap. Hey, Sarge, I'm a jerk, a real jerk. I wanted to lose her. That's what they told me. When I, when I got off guard doing this morning, I found her standing by my foxhole. I'm just no good, Sarge. Ah, take it easy, Gallagher. We all make mistakes. Yeah, but not as many as I've made my whole life. It's been a mistake. Come on, sit down for a minute. Here's a cigarette. Thanks. I'm a hard luck guy. If you only knew. Why don't you tell me about it, Gallagher? Yeah. Yeah, it's been eating me up inside. I, I gotta get it out of me. While he sat there with what was left of Scotty in his arms, I found out what was his trouble. Been alone and kicked around ever since he was a kid. Before he joined the army, he'd worked for a construction firm. One day, the ditch he was working in collapsed and buried his pal. Gallagher got out of it okay, but his pal didn't. It wasn't Gallagher's fault, but he was blamed for it and fired. And he couldn't forget it. No matter where he turned, there was always somebody to remind him about it. So he joined the army, trying to get away from it all. But it did no good. He got to the point where he hated everybody but himself most of all. By the time he finished telling me, he quieted down some. Well, there it is, Sarge. I guess you're glad I did ask for transfer, huh? Forget it. Now, look at it this way. Scotty wanted to be your friend, but you didn't give her a chance. The guys in this squad want to be your friends, too. So now it's up to you. How about it? Uh, 
I don't think they'll want anything to do with me anymore after this. I wouldn't say that. People aren't as hard as you think they are. You just got to give them a chance. Now, come on, let's go. I'll tell the first sergeant to forget about that transfer. Okay, Sarge. And uh, thanks. When we stood up, I happened to look out into the valley to our front. The sun was full up now, and I could see clearly. What I saw made me do a double take, for down the road about five miles away, heading toward us, was a column of tanks. I focused my binoculars on them and saw right away that they were the enemies. Gallagher, get down to the battery right away and tell the CO, and then get back immediately with the walkie-talkie. I think we're finally going to hear our 105 in action. I figured out the ranges and coordinates on my map. By the time Gallagher got back, I was able to radio the approximate target positions and start firing. <laughs> Within 20 minutes, our battery had destroyed 15 tanks and sent what was left of them in full retreat. But the tanks were not the only surprise that morning. When Gallagher and I finally got back to the battery, we found another surprise waiting. Hi, Sarge. How'd we do? Great, Corporal Harris. Just great. <laughs> Where are the men? I want to tell them. They're over by Gallagher's foxhole. My foxhole? Uh-huh. They know about Scotty? Yeah. yeah. I uh, told them about it when I came down before. How'd they take it? Well, they were pretty sore, naturally, but... But now, in the light of what's happened... What do you mean? Well, that's what the guys are standing around Gallagher's foxhole for. They found a litter of puppies Scotty gave birth to before she went with him up the hill. Oh, well, what do you know? If I only looked in a foxhole. Well, she's gone now. But she left something of herself behind. I think no man could ask for more. Well, I guess that about finishes it up. Our squad and battery, with Gallagher sparking them all the way, later on won several citations for themselves. By the time the war was over, there were enough descendants of Scotty to furnish a mascot for each of us. Well, I better get back to my duty post. If you ever get down my way, stop in and I'll introduce you to Scotty. Scotty the Third. Did you know that you can get ahead, enjoy your work, have security and a steady job, all when you enlist in the United States Army? Why, you'll get your first promotion when you've been in only a few months. There's a wide variety of jobs available, but most important, you'll be helping to preserve the national security of our country. Why don't you check at your local recruiting office and let them tell you how you can make the most of your life in the United States Army. This has been another program on Proudly We Hail, presented transcribed in cooperation with this station. Proudly We Hail is produced by the Recruiting Publicity Center in New York for the United States Army, and this is Mark Hamilton speaking, inviting you to tune in this same station next week for another interesting story on Proudly We Hail.